She said, my name is Spiwe Mpanza um, from Movie TV. I'm a presenter and producer, program producer. How I started TV was interesting because I I didn't have the dream. I didn't. I never wanted to be a TV personality or to work in media. But uh, when, when I completed school way back in 2000 and something, <laughs> I I was just at home and you know you're home. You're listening to radio all the time. And I had one particular, one favorite radio presenter that I loved, Kaliwa, because I loved how he spoke. He was so eloquent. He he was just good at what he was doing and he is what he is what inspired me to get into media into tv so i started journalism at zamcom zambia institute of mass communication and graduated in 2009 well, i started working at movie tv while i was still in uni in college at, at um, zamcom i I was an intern in my second year. I went there as an intern, and through my work and what I was doing, surprisingly, they liked it and they they were impressed at what I was doing. So I got into it. When I completed school, they asked me to come back. So luckily, I never had to write a, an application letter to look for a job. I got a job there and then. <laughs> I started working for the. If, I, don't, I don't know if many of you watch Z Kids News. That is where my interest was. I joined Z Kids News. I loved it because, I mean, working with kids is the best thing. They, they're not a problem. <laughs> they can say whatever they want to say. And, yeah, so it was fun. I worked there uh, with uh, the likes of Lulu as well as Mwaka. Um, until today, I'm still uh, pre not presenting the program. I'm producing the program now because I've outgrown it. But thank you for... Z Kids News because it's what brought me on TV, and uh, I now I also have um, a program that I produce and present as well on Fridays. It's called Sunrise on Friday. I present it with Jack Afella. Uh, it's something fun, something that I love to do because I'm mainly into entertainment. So I want to see what is entertaining, what's fun. I'm not interested in the news. Of course, I have to know what's happening, but switch back to entertainment and all the fun things. I also produce a gospel show called Gospel Connection. It's a gospel music show where we play music and have interviews with gospel artists. That's what I wanted to do. So I'm happy that I, I would get a chance to do and make sure that what I want to see on TV is put on TV because I believe TV is supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be interesting, and for people like me that love the entertainment industry, that is what I want to see on TV. So basically that's my story, my TV story. Short, but I love it. My journey starts somewhere between 1997 and 1999. And I'm gonna share why it started then. But I think around that time was the first time that Channel O came to Zambia. And there was a show called Obama. And I remember the tagline was, they'd go like, Obama, then it'd be like, where Africa meets. And there was this really handsome South African guy called Lungile Radu, who's still in the South African entertainment industry. And he was one of the hosts of the show. And then there was Grace, this light-skinned girl with dreadlocks. There was a guy called Cabello, who now does Kwaito. And then there was this really pretty girl called Nonle Tema. Now, Nonle Tema had legit brand jeans. She had a weave. And that time, I thought that was like her real hair. And I just wanted her life. Like, I wanted to be her. She had so much fun on camera. They'd have like DJs, and she'd like dance along to the music. You can tell that she was having a really good time. So I said, I'm going to be the next Nonle Tema. And that was like somewhere between 97 and 99. So fast forward to 2007. My family moved to New York. And one of my friends was like, Maz, you love African celebrity news. Why don't you start a blog? And that time, like blogs, the only blog I knew was Bella Niger. And I'm sure a lot of the ladies here would know that's where you find like weddings and really cute Chitenge outfit inspiration there. So at that time, it was Bella Niger on Blogspot. So I was like, OK, I'm going to start a blog. I started a blog. A year after that, um, this 
Kenyan guy called Elias Maghetto, who is based in Washington, D.C., sent me an email and said, I really love your blog. I want you to come and work for my, for my African entertainment portal. And he said, we're trying to move into online because that's where everyone is They're on YouTube and stuff. So we want you to write for us, but we also want you to go to like African events. So everything from fashion week to food tastings and things that had something to do with African inspiration. So I agreed and I had this little digital camera, so I had my friend and he had to be my plus one every time we went somewhere. And none of us had any editing skills whatsoever. So literally you'd have to be like one take. It'd have to be the best take and you know, that's, that's it. So I'm gonna go back to my non Tema story because it, it kind of inter intersects. So 2009, um, I think 2009, 2010, Nonne Tema started hosting a show called um, O Access. This was on a new channel called Vuzu. So she was coming to New York and I emailed her, like she had a fan page and stuff and she had a Facebook page as well. And I, you know, I emailed her and said, I love you. I want to be you. You're coming to New York. Can we meet up? I'll pay for your coffee. And you know, she actually, she gave me her number and said, I'm going to be staying at this hotel. Call this, call this number, call my hotel number. My hotel room is this. So I actually called and we actually ended up meeting up and then she says, okay, come with me. I'm about to interview Carrie Hilson. So I said, Carrie Hilson? She's like, yes. And that was when Carrie Hilson had just um, released um, the song with Kanye West. I forgot what it's called, but she was like, she was a new artist. Yes, knocks you down, thanks. And that, she was a new artist. So not only time I was interviewing Carrie Hilson and I sat back and just watched her work and, you know, just kept falling in love with, you know, this, with TV and with online media and stuff. So after this, Noni and I kept in touch and then she came to New York again a year later. And I remember I was underage, so in New York you have to be 21 years old to drink. And Noni tells the waiter, bring Moe from my friend Maz. And I've never had Moe in my life, so I'm like, oh wow, okay. And I'm like, come on, I'm, I'm underage. And she's like, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. So she's the first person who ever bought me moe, so thank you, Nonle Teva. <laughs> so yeah, so um, in speaking to Nonle and in interviewing her, one of the things I asked her was, I need your advice, like how do I go about this? And she said, be your own, be yourself. So there's only going to be one, one Nonle Teva, which is me. And you know, you have your own journey, so like just be yourself, like what are you interested in? You know, just keep on doing the online stuff, keep interviewing celebrities. So the next person I interviewed after that was Van Vicker. He's in Hollywood. Nollywood actor, and then I interviewed Ianya as well, the guy who sang um, Your Waist, Your Waist, I forgot, Kukere, Kukere, yes, so I interviewed him, and that was, that was right after he'd won Project Fame West Africa. So <laughs> fast forward now to 2012 when I moved back to Zambia in October, and I was unemployed, sitting on my parents' couch, and was flipping through DSTV, and then I saw Chavo Channel. And I never watched Travel Channel, I was in the States, but like here I was like, oh wow, there's house hunters and get to see all these really nice houses. And then there was this one show about these guys who like literally quit their jobs, were flying around the world going to all these places. So I said, I want, I want, to, I want to do that. I want to be paid to go around to different countries and, you know. And then at the same time, I was reading this website called OK Africa, which was started, I don't know if any of you guys know The Roots, they perform for, on The Tonight Show, yes. So The Roots have a website called OK Africa. So I used to read it a lot, and then there was this list that said the 10 African festivals that everyone needs to attend. So I was like, wow, festivals, travel. Right there and then I said, okay, I'm gonna go around Africa, I'm gonna host festivals. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna, that's gonna be my niche. I'm gonna go and host festivals and film celebrities and it's gonna be on YouTube. So I'm a really big believer in putting things out to the universe. So I put this on Twitter, I said, how awesome would it be to get paid to travel around Africa for travel channel or whatever channel and get paid to do it? So there was a girl following me called Lorraine, Lorraine Goya, she's that girl in the video. And she's, um, she's Tanzanian, but she was born and raised in Zimbabwe. And she, I was following her from before, and then she sent me a message and said, girl, let's, let's do the show. Like, let's actually make it happen. And I'd never met her in my life. So she said, in Zimbabwe, in two weeks, um, the Harare International Festival of Arts is happening. Would you like to come? And we can shoot a pilot. I know these two guys who are really cool. They're not expensive. So we can just, like, you know, film and have them film us. 
So that's actually the result of the trip I made to Zimbabwe without ever having met Lorraine. And um, that's Lorraine. And so we, the day we met, we started shooting. So we stayed together for a whole week. We shot, and that's how the Fest Gurus was born. And that was in 2013 in April at this Harare International Festival of Arts. So two years later, which is now where we are, 2015, um, we've been to about, I don't know, maybe 12 festivals. And um, we've, the first season alone, which was April 2013 to December 2013, we traveled 129 hours. So that was driving for 129 hours. So what happened is the two guys, Gui and Zash, who are also in this video, they do our photos and video, and then they became part of the show as well. They would drive from Harare, pick me up in Zambia. And then at 3 a.m., they'd be like, OK, now we're driving to Malawi, or we're driving to like somewhere else. and. That would kind of be our journey. We had no money, so we're using all our own mo money. That's Zash with the Afro. We're using all the money to get to festivals. And um, we had this dream of attending Lake of Stars Festival, which is in Malawi. It's actually happening this weekend again. And we decided, OK, you know what? We're going to do crowdfunding. We did crowdfunding because crowdfunding is a way of kind of testing your audience. So this is a trailer that we came up with that was on our crowdfunding page. And then we hosted two um, screenings, one in Harare and one in Lusaka. We had people come out and tell us like what they liked. If it was too short, if it was too long, what the sound sounded like and stuff like that. And then from that feedback, we kind of kept going for it. So if you go on YouTube, we have about maybe six or seven videos now. And we're still sitting on some content that hasn't been released yet. But so pretty much, just in a nutshell, The Fest Gurus is a docu-reality show that follows four young Africans, myself being one, Lorraine being the second, Guiai and Zash, as we head to different African festivals trying to explore the culture and just trying to encourage our fellow Africans to travel and go on what we call fest festications, which is like a festival and a vacation at the same time. So we've had lots of fun. Um, you know, our videos are all really different, so some are a bit longer than others, but like that's again testing the audience, trying to see what people like and what people don't like. And I mean, it's, it's been an amazing experience. I've made friends with these people. I've been to Gui's wedding. Um, Lorraine's getting married soon too, so I'm going to her wedding. So for me, one of the best things about this experience has been like the friendships that it's created. We've met some amazing artists. We met Koli Chana, and he remembered my name and Lorraine's name, so we're just like, oh my god, like he knows our names. And um, we've met a bunch of other artists as well. So we've had a really good time doing this show. And in closing, I just want to say that, you know, if, if you're, any of you want to like do a show or anything, um, just create your own content. So we had the goal of, you know, being on TV and it just never happened for us. We'd go to meetings and we'd almost be there and then something would happen and, you know, the deal would never be made. So for us, YouTube was a way of doing it. And I mean, it's worked for us so far. So yeah, I mean, create the content that you want to see. My name's Mutale Mwanza. I was born and raised in a, in a very small town on the Copper Belt called Kitwe. I first started, um, well, I first joined the media industry in 2007. Um, I just completed no, I just completed school. I got a diploma in business studies. I really, really wanted to be a lawyer. But I thought to myself, I don't know how that's going to work out with all these closures in the country and riots and things like that. I'm going to end up spending like seven years or like 10 years at university. Let's not let that happen. So um, a friend of mine said to me, you know what? Uh, Gesh, Chala uh, Chitoshi, is opening a radio station in Kitwe. And he's actually auditioning people, so why don't you go and give it a shot? So I said, okay, maybe, you know, just, you know, for the fun of it. And um, I decided to call up Gesh. A whole bunch of us were, you know, went to his house. We were training and auditioning from there. Um, that's really where Flavor FM started, um, at his house in Nationalist in Kitsway. So the whole crew, like a whole bunch of us, like 26 presenters, like fresh off, I don't know, university or work or anything. He, he basically took a bunch of fresh people who'd never been on radio before and just trained us from scratch. And when the radio station opened in 2008, um, it was beautiful because we had learned so much. We, we were in training for, for about six months before the station opened. And in 2008, Flavor FM opened and I hosted the breakfast show with him 
for a good, I think, five or four years. Now he's. He's he's an amazing uh, he's an amazing personality, very strict, very controversial, and it was a lot of work um, having to you know do a show with a veteran. Yeah, like he had literally done radio for over ten years, and I was new and I was scared. And my first breakfast show sucked. I talked about the KKK. I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I made silly comments. It was it was crazy, but. I loved working with him because I learned a lot, and I was I, ab I was able to grow into my own personality. Eventually, as the years went by, I was able to stand up to him, and we would challenge each other on radio. I I don't know. I learned a few Ingi jokes. <laughs> I learned a lot of English words. Uh, there's a word that I he always used to talk about: pedantic. Yeah. You know, he's one of those people who likes using those big, big words. I'm always like, why do you like using big English? Like, just talk normally. <laughs> so I learned a lot from Gesh, um, and I did the radio, the, the breakfast show. It was sponsored by MTN. I did that from 2008 until 2011. I kind of started feeling like, huh, I need, I need to do something more. And funny enough, like, um, like Mazuba. I used to watch Nantle Tema on TV and I loved her a lot. A lot, 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 lot. She presented Channel O. She was the first African to have, you know, a reality TV show. She was the first African, the first face of dark and lovely. She was just amazing. And I say to myself, I want to be that girl. Can I just be on TV? So as the years went by, I needed a challenge. I wanted to do something different. I, I wanted to grow. You know, oftentimes when you do something that you love and you begin to do it with your eyes closed and it doesn't challenge you anymore, it's a problem. I could go on radio and do my breakfast show in pajamas with my eyes closed and everybody would love it and say, oh, what an amazing show. But I, I felt like, you know, it was a straight line. My career was like that. It wasn't ascending. So I say to myself, okay, I think it's time to move to a different country. So in 2012, 2011, 2012, I relocated to South Africa. And there's, there's a friend of mine uh, based there. His name is Chuma Piri. He used to work for Channel O. I think, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. There's Chuma Piri, used to work for Channel O. Then there's Chilu Lemba, who's an amazing voice artist, who also resides there. I mean, oftentimes, when I, when I worked at Flavor FM, I used to travel you know, to South Africa for holidays and things like that. So I would, I would always meet up with Chilu or Chuma and just try and find out how the media industry works in South Africa. And Chilu would take me sometimes, you know, he would be like, okay, um, I have free time, come, let's go, let's go to Randberg, let's go to Multi-Choice, um, I have voiceovers, come and you can come along and see what I do. So he was kind enough, you know, to show me around and I, I, I learned a lot about the industry, the South African industry from him. But when I relocated, it was Chuma who I called up. I mean, he used to be a drinking buddy of mine. Like, he was the last person I thought, okay, like, we could do anything serious. Um, he introduced me to the producers of Good Morning Africa. It's, it's, a, it's, a, good, it's a breakfast show on, on DSTV, on Africa Magic. And I started working there. He introduced me to the boss, and he just literally threw me <laughs> in, in the deep end. We got there, and he's like, okay, so you're going to meet the boss. I'm leaving you here, impress him, bye. And I had to walk in like, oh, hi, <laughs> my name is, you know, I'm amazing, hire me. <laughs> um, yeah, well, being Zambian was an added advantage because they wanted that. So I had a chat with him, I gave him my CV and everything else that I had, and he was like, great, uh, come for orientation. And after a month, I started working there, but I still felt like I needed to do something more. I worked for Good Morning Africa as a field presenter for like seven months. And I just wanted to do more. I was just really hungry. I was really inspired by him because he's Nigerian. And he was doing a lot for his country. A lot of Nigerians used to go there. Each and every musician under the sun from Nigeria you can think of. Good Morning Africa is their first stop. From Dibanj to Tiwa Savage to Iyanya to Whiskey to Davido. That was their first stop. Like they want to be on Good Morning Africa because he had a platform to give to them. And I thought to myself, maybe I should do something for Zambia as well, you know? And uh, that's when I started working on the concept Kumwesu under a production company called Ground Focus based in South Africa. I did it with a partner of mine. 
um, partner at the time. <laughs> Yeah, life happens. <laughs> so I started production on Kumwesu, Underground Focus uh, Productions, and it was really fun. We pitched it to Africa Magic. They liked the concept. It was a lifestyle show, 30 minutes. Um, at the time, we couldn't, we couldn't make it all about Zambia because it was on a continental platform, and they wanted content for the Sadic region. So we made it very Sadic oriented and it was it was an amazing journey to having you know to be able to produce and present a show like that i would often come back you know come back to zambia introduce people i mean interview people like hey Bochunku. <laughs> we had them on the show i've had the opportunity to interview some of the most um, influential and amazing people in africa like uh, south africa's public protector tuli madonsela the lady who called out jacob zuma on that nkandla house uh, I sat in her office, we had tea, it was amazing. I spoke to her. People like Tiwa Savage, obviously your whiz kids, your Yanyas, your Debanges, your Dr. Sids, your Notley Temas. I mean, Notley was somebody I would only see on TV, but I mean, we're now speaking the same language. You know, I would walk into a room and she would be like, oh, who's that girl? You know, but this is somebody I grew up watching and we developed a friendship. So, I've been privileged also to travel the African continent. It's a beautiful continent. So many untapped sceneries that need to be exposed, you know? And after working on Kumwesu and doing a whole lot of that, I decided to come back and relocate and start my own media company. And uh, I'm not doing Kumwesu anymore. It's now under, you know, somebody else is uh, presenting it. Her name is also Mutale. It's starting next month on Zambezi Magic. Right now I'm currently working for Hot FM. I have a radio show. <laughs> Monday to Thursday, 18 hours to 21. So I think you know what my boss thinks about me being here right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm also working on my television talk show. So I decided to come back home to just basically spread my wings and do a whole lot more for Zambia because there's a channel called Zambezi Magic that has opened and they want Zambian content and I'm back here and trying to work on that and deliver what they want. Well, just to introduce myself a bit, my name is Abel Chungo Masuka. I am an artist. Yeah. The reason why I'd like to say that and stop right there because I feel the most wonderful thing that every single one of us has is an idea. We have an idea, but the problem is, is that when we get an idea, it's mostly either eaten up by lack of confidence or by wrong opinions. So we kind of shove it back somewhere and we feel like, eh, you know, we can't really pitch it, we can't really use it. But lately I had a great experience, I'll honestly tell you. One of them was actually just an I was a vision, and the second was an actual situation. The first one, is let me give the actual situation. The actual situation was I was actually called up by um, some officials and they wanted me to work on a project. And I remember sitting in that room with these men and these dudes were, I mean, you're talking about what we call the buenas. And so they were sitting down there going through their budget and talking about a lot of stuff. And then finally they got to me and they said, uh, now we're going to hear from an artist. And I remember the way they said it, like they weren't expecting anything intelligent. So I had written everything that I thought about in detail. So first of all, I looked at their budget for what they wanted to give me. I'll honestly say it was like a hundred and something. Now my budget for what I wanted, what they had asked me to do, they told me just do it. So I said, what's your budget? They told me like, oh. so I drew up this detailed budget and everything like that. It came to about eight something, eight hundred and something. So when I presented mine, I could hear them giggling. Then they said, can you please explain? And I started breaking everything down. And by the time I was done, I looked at these men in the boardroom and I said, you know, I said, now I want to find out how you guys came up with your budget. And the whole room was quiet. Then I said to them, I said, you know, the reason why in Zambia we keep doing the same mediocre kind of stuff is because we don't want to be honest with ourselves on what quality looks like. And I told them, I said, the stuff that you've been telling me about who's done it for you and what's done, that's mediocre. And they said, how dare you say that? I said, okay, fine, I'll challenge you. And they got their advisors, and some of them were heads of CEOs of different companies, and we met the next day. And I remember I took them a video that Ground Zero had done, a, a, some work that Ground Zero had done, and we put it on the picture, and they brought some other stuff that other people had done and put it on. And eventually they said, okay, you know what, you're right. And they called me up later and said, Abel, we want to work with you because we love your honesty. We love the fact that you're straightforward and you tell it like it is. 
And this is where I really want to start from is because when I do what I do or in how we try to do it, I know we're not the best, but we aim for the best. We aim to outdo what's already been done. For me, when I, even the same way I take my music, when somebody tells me, oh, your music is amazing, I think of myself like, okay, I've got this nice store that's popular in Zambia, but it's not a big franchise. <laughs> so if I'm doing stores, which means I need to compete with other stores, and there's other stores which are bigger and better. So if you're telling me that we're doing a movie, in Zambia, we're doing a series. I need to be able to present it to ETV. I need to be able to present it to anything. And at the end of the day, yes, there's steps and we're getting there. But at the end of the day, I wanted to be competing at every level. I remember when we did the Cool Rock show and Kenny called me up. He said, dude, we've got the show that we want to start. Now, Kenny, I know for a fact, has been grinding. Kenny and Gambila, Ground Zero, have been grinding, always pushing the limits. And one of the things that I love about them is that those guys actually know what it takes to do something. But they say, you know what? No one ever wants to pay that amount. But if the, amount, the money's there, we'll do it. And so I remember when Kenny called me up and says, dude, we want to do this show, but we're just on our own budget and everything. And I said, cool, let's do it. And so we started working on the show. And I remember we shot 13 seasons, done. And then Kenny calls me up one day. And he says, dude, I, I didn't know how to tell you this. I'm like, what? He says, um, we didn't like the quality. So I'm like, okay, of which episode? He said, all of them. I said, okay, so what are you saying? He says, well, we have to shoot the whole season from scratch. And Kenny was waiting for me to blow my head off. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Because for me, the standard was the most important. The quality part was the most important. And I'll tell you, like, these principles and different things I learned. Because I remember growing up in Zambia, and we used to watch TV, and we used to see things, and we'd be like, oh, my gosh, what they're doing in America. And so I remember, uh, I don't, even Galumba remembers, the first job I ever had was I used to write scripts for Cabanana. I was 18 years old. That was the first job I ever had. So that was the first time I ever stepped into the entertainment industry. And, and so also getting an opportunity to start early, made me aim even higher because by the time I was getting into college people were like oh my gosh that celebrity and this celebrity I'm like yeah but I know those guys you know what I'm saying and now I started thinking seeing things from a natural perspective and one of the best things that I always tell people I always encourage people to get exposure because exposure will show you what the rest of the world is thinking or how the rest of the world is moving or what the other competition is like I really hate it when we start thinking of others just no you're good for Zambia. No, I don't want to be good for Zambia. I want to be good for Africa and I'm good for the rest of the world. And I remember when I moved to the States, I went to, uh, I lived in Oklahoma. And I remember those things that I, ne I used to feel lack of, lack, let's say, not confident about. I used to think like, oh man, you know, I'm not good enough to do this. And people are telling me like, dude, you're really good. I'm like, really? No, you're really good. And it's like, it's funny that we ha I had to go somewhere abroad to come and be told of feel confident about myself. Meanwhile, I was doing it at the same standard here. So what, even when I come back, I tell them, I always tell people like, never let your ideas be killed by anyone. The problem is here, we have an, we have an idea whereby we shoot each other down even before somebody was it. And then finally, when we see somebody on TV, it's like, oh yeah, we always knew she had it. But we never gave them support. We never gave them the backing. We were never honest. One of the things, even with our projects, um, as we have a group called Lotta House, different guys work together, Pompey, Mag44, Tio, uh, now Israel, we're very, very honest with each other. When we do a project, we get done and we're like, okay, what do you think? And I love positive opinions. I love not, I'm not talking about like everything is thumbs up. I love people who are real, who break it down for me and tell me like, okay, this is not good. This is not good. That's not good. This is not good. This is not good. That's not good. And even when we got done with the Cool Rock show, um, one of the things was we, we launched it when, we, when they launched Zambezi Magic. And um, the, the marketing manager at the time for, for a friend, she comes up to him and like, hey, yo, you know one thing that I loved about the show? We love the quality. And like, well, that's a, that's a good thing. 
What we didn't want to do is pass it off as a show because it's Zambia. Like, y'all don't have Zambian content. We need Zambian. And sometimes I meet people like that. Why don't we have Zambian stuff on there? Well, why don't we do good quality stuff? And I'm, and I'm happy that new stuff is coming with great quality, with a great push. But I do not want us or any of you guys here to assume that, oh, there's a loophole. They want Zambian, so let me just push it because it's Zambian. No. I want us when we get to that level when we're competing or your ideas are competing at a level where they'll be like, wow, why didn't we think up of this? So now one of the most amazing things is that I've realized the most powerful thing that you have is an idea. The most powerful thing that you have is an idea because the thing about an idea is that when it's where it stems from, if it's believed in, it will attract all the necessary components to make itself work. So Facebook was an idea from one guy's mind and now it's hired hundreds of employees. Foxdale Court was an idea, and now it's got different stores and different people brought their ideas to plug in to make it work. I remember I had a vision about that. That's the second thing I was talking about. I had a vision about that. Well, I walked into a... All right. Well, I walked into an office, and I remember I was about to make a presentation, and I was a bit intimidated because everybody in the room was suits, and I remember I was wearing a black T-shirt with some white stuff written on it. And so all of a sudden, the man who, who, who uh, like everybody was waiting for, and I've been in meetings like this, and he walks in and says, okay, hurry up, I, I need to rush. So then I stopped, I said, sorry, you said what? And he said, hurry up, I need to rush. I said, you know what, I'm not going to make my presentation. He says, what do you mean, you're wasting my time? I'm like, no, you're wasting my time. I said, because what you need to understand is that I'm a creative. I make ideas. It's people like me that create stuff and create companies that you come to work for. You're only working for an idea. Somebody else had to think up of a company or a bank or what and then decided, hmm, we need a general manager or we need this kind of person or we need a supervisor and plugged in. Nowadays, we have people who are creatives feeling downcast or, feel, or being looked down upon because, you know, they're not in suits and ties and not working in office. Trust me, the most powerful thing that you can be is a creative person, is a person who drives for ideas and makes them work. And I believe with that kind of passion, we'll make a movie industry work, we'll make the music industry work, we'll make television shows work. Even right now with Kenny, we're, we're like, okay, no, Cool Rock Show is done, now what's next? And we've already built on two concepts now that everybody's like, wow, this is going to be really good. And that's the power of an idea right now. People don't see, but we've already seen the vision. And we're ready to carry it out. So the most important thing that my encouragement is never let your dreams or your goals die. Different people have different opinions, especially if it's never been done. People are ready to shoot something down that they've never seen before. Like in my profession, you have a lot of people giving me opinions about stuff that they've never done before. But sometimes you got to go to people who you know can give you a good and also figure out how best you can make it better. Um, sometimes when you're making a pitch, when you've got an idea, sometimes the best people to go is people who can fund it. That's one. Sometimes you can go to people who are kind of like you if, you, if you're very confident in what you're doing, you also need to get a team of people that you feel can add to it. Like one of the things, I'm not a very organized person. I procrastinate a lot. So one of the things is I have a manager. Me and my manager, we share ideas because he's very detailed. And so sometimes I'll pitch ideas to people who I know are very detailed and just look through the loopholes. Or I'll create something and then I'll get somebody else. I'm like, okay, dude, you are very good at writing the little undertones of dialogue. Then I'll come and review that. So that's the best thing about coming at idea to make it solid. Find other people with other strengths. That's what makes, even when you watch a movie, you watch the credits, it just doesn't say directed by an end of story. No, there's the grip, the camera light, the what, the dude who did the makeup, the what, the set design. It's a whole different team with people with different strengths who came together to make that idea more solid and make it work. So find people that you feel are able to add to it and polish it up so that you can actually present that idea much better than you could before. Ladies and gentlemen, a very big hand to the rest of the panel. These guys are really lovely. And the funny thing is that I've worked with almost all of them except Mazur, and I'm sure we're yet to do some really good stuff together. I'm Kalumba Chikonde. I started radio at a very tender age, uh, at the age of um, 18. I've been on radio for 18 years, and I've done TV for the past um, 13 years. I started with Radio Phoenix, where I was um, a presenter, 
a producer, a scriptwriter, and the voice of the artist. I worked for Radio Phoenix until 2002. After that, I worked for QFM. At QFM, I was a presenter and I was a co producer of the Breakfast Show, which was hosted by LBC then. And I used to produce um, a Boogie C's show called The Rush 180, which was a drive time show. And in 2004, I left QFM to start a project with Zach, Oscar and Kenny Tonga. We applied for a license for uh, Hot FM. Um, so I'm one of the founder members of Hot FM. I was the first programs manager there. And I'm still creative and content director at Hot FM. So I work with uh, my friend here, Mutali. Um, TV wise, I, my first TV break was given to me by uh, Joe Chibango in 2002. Uh, Joe believed in me, I don't know how. Um, I had never been on TV before. Um, Mondo Music then decided to start a musical show. So they did auditions. I didn't know about those auditions and how they did them. They did not find a person uh, to do the show. They wanted somebody who really had you know, uh, the know-how in terms of Sami music, the knowledge of the industry, and uh, the passion as well. Then Joe found me at a shopping mall, I think it was Manda Hill, then he says, dude, we're looking for a presenter for the Mondo Music Song, which was basically a show to promote Mondo Music then, you know, the music, talking about the outlets, the CDs, profiling the artists. So I was told to start the show like tomorrow, like we met in the evenings actually. Then it says, tomorrow we're starting the Mondo Music Zone. Uh, can you do it? I said, I can't do it because I've never done TV before. Then it says, no, you can do it. Just come to our offices. So. I believed in myself. I went to the offices in Inokavu Road for Mondo Music. I met Trisha Fagotia. I'd worked with him at Phoenix though, so, uh, but um, TV-wise, I'd never done it, of course. Then he says, Calvin, I've never done TV. Can you do this? And I said, yeah, I would try. Uh, so he gave me an opportunity. They gave me the script. There I was on TV. I made a lot of mistakes, but thank God for Trisha and, uh, and, 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 and George Wangu. They made me comfortable, and there's something I learned since then, and this is a principle I live with. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to make a mistake, all right? And that's how we, we learn, that's how we perfect our art. So I hosted the Monday Music Zone from 2002 to um, 2005. In 2003, while doing the Monday Music Zone, um, apparently Yoko, she's not here, um, took me for an audition at ZMBC. Um, I did not know she was taking me for an audition, we just went, I wanted to see what Cabana was all about, not knowing she was throwing me into an audition. So I was taken into an audition for presenters for the um, uh, Cabana reality show. There was a time that some actors from Cabana left and they had to replace them, so they called for auditions. So I was one of the anchors of the um, a Cabana reality show, and that's when I met Abel Chung way back in 2002. He was actually our floor manager, always cool, calm, and collected as usual. Um, then I did a show for Unilever after the um, the Cabana reality show. By the way, Cabana reality show was the first time I ever did a live show. I'd never done a live show before. All the shows I hosted were like um, pre-recorded. I was very conscious, like this is ZNBC. I can't make a mistake. But the guys I was working with made me very, very comfortable. You know, uh, Picture Perfect Production, uh, Flow Manager Abel always believed in us. You know, uh, even as uh, when we went on, on uh, you know, on set. After that, I in 2005, Monday Music Zone stopped. And um, I think I, 2005, I decided to, to quit radio and, 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 and TV as well. I wanted to focus on something else. Um, I went through a phase I always tell people called the harsh reality. Uh, LBC can attest to this. We reached a point where we thought this industry wasn't making sense. Radio, the money wasn't making sense. You know, uh, it was just like it's not making sense. Uh, I remember CQ was my housemate. Then he told me, "Dude, you can't quit radio. You can't quit TV." That's you. Then in 2006, I decided to, um, to share an idea with CQ. Then it says, dude, this is a very good idea for a music videos countdown because um, I had a lot of passion for music videos after the Monday Music Zone. So I created a show called The People's Choice in 2006. Then we were living in Marshlands. Me and CQ walked to movie TV when they just started. So I went to see you know, Angel Piri then as, as creative director, I think. 
then I, I pitched the idea to him about uh, the people's choice and how it would work and uh, he told me dude are you sure we're gonna be having videos where do you think the videos will come for a two hour show then I told him listen I believe that this show is gonna, it's gonna drive people to even start producing videos all right then it didn't work uh, I waited for another year I could go there and it didn't work then I Coincidentally, I met Mr. Nyarenda at Rhapsodies when I was just having a few drinks with my friends and he said, Kaluma, I want you to be one of the continuity announcers at Movie TV. Then I said, no, I already have an idea that I sent there. Um, then he said, oh, come tomorrow. Then the following day I went, they put me live on TV for the same people's choice show. It didn't have any intro, nothing, nothing, nothing. It just went there. Lulu Hangala was my first producer of the people's choice. So I hosted people's choice for five years. Um, I think it was a show that changed the first of music videos in the country. I was very honest with the, with the, with the musicians. I, I told them the standard that we wanted. And uh, at some point, um, I created a bit of beef, especially with the guys from the Cobra Belt, because they had good music, but their videos were not so good. So I could say it out on TV like, hey guys, I love your music, but your videos do something about it. So I was looked at as uh, XYZ that time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I really had a little justification to do. So just to impress the guys in the Copa Belt and just to also tell them that, look, you can do good videos. I started an edition called the Copa La Swag Edition. All right. So that changed everything. They used to bring their videos and then I could mix the Copa La videos, Saka videos and all videos. Then I think the guys started realizing that, look, this one is, new, is not even a hater anyways. Then they started doing like really good videos and it became competitive. So I did People's Choice from 2007 to 2012. In 2012, um, Zamtel approached me. Then they said they were starting a program called um, Today with Zamtel. At first the focus was basically product promotion, the operations of the company and everything. By the way, I, 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 I was tempted um, by the money so uh, I, I, I had to jump on board. Um, People's Choice was, was also sponsored by uh, another mobile network company. But uh, other than the money, I just wanted to also change my image, okay, from just a musical guy, musical guy, all right? I wanted to do something different. So um, I, I, I jumped on board the Zamtel show. Uh, in fact, before the Zamtel show, the way I changed my, my, my image from the musical guy, uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia gave me an opportunity to present um, a show for elections. They wanted a youthful appeal for elections 2011. So I was doing both TV and radio for elections 2011. Then of course 2012, um, to deal with Zantel. Um, like I said, it started as just promoting Zantel products. Then every season was changing. We had different themes. We profiled towns. Um, we profiled politicians. Then there's, a t then there's a season we did the road to independence, uh, which also went on DSTV um, ED channel last year, the whole of October. Um, then in 2012 itself, uh, Ground Zero called for an audition for the Mosi Laga Zambia Music Awards when the Mosi Laga Zambia Music Awards started. So I was auditioned, um, and I'm told there were a lot of heavyweights that weren't there, but I was humble enough despite all the years I've been in the industry. A lot of guys don't go for auditions, by the way. They'll tell you, what can you tell me? I've been in the industry for 15 years. But I went for auditions, you know, I was auditioned, and I was called by, you know, Ground Zero. I said, dude, let's do this. And I tell you, this has been one of the most exciting productions for me in as far as uh, TV in Zambia is concerned. So today with Zamtel, now is hosted by Patience, uh, Patience Tisanga Asians. Uh, when I got a full-time job, with Multi-Choice Zambia in the PR department as PR officer. Um, I avoided the brand conflict because a lot of people associated me with, 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 with Zamtel. So I, I had to you know, tell Zamtel that, guys, uh, it's difficult for me to continue with the show right now because I am working full-time with Multi-Choice Zambia in the PR department. So that's my story about TV, but I'm still doing the road to uh, the Zambia Music Awards. Apparently, uh, Multi-Choice doesn't have a problem with this. Um, but they say I have to mention that I'm a PR officer. Uh, it has to be written there just to avoid the, the brand conflict as well. So that's basically my story. Um, to those that are aspiring to, 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 to do content, like Abel said, it all starts with an idea. People's Choice was an idea that I pitched. Um, and I get paid through ideas, that's all I can say. And going forward, I was asked, where do you see TV in Zambia? There's a lot of TV stations coming up. The creatives, like all of us that are here, have an opportunity 
to pitch their content and get paid. You know, um, Zambezi Magic, which my colleagues have talked about, is another platform. These guys have been here a couple of times. Um, we have hosted present producers forums, calling for content, asking guys to bring forth their content. And I think we'll tell it told you how you can send your content and you can also come to the mass choice office there's an open policy there you know and uh, the content can be sent to south africa so believe in yourself don't worry about what anybody's going to say especially when they're putting you down but i'll tell you the industry is not easy it's not easy out there it's not all rosy when you see these guys on tv and you think it's all rosy it's not easy it's not easy and i think this is the other thing i always tell those people that are coming into the industry when you go into it for the money, you will be frustrated. The first thing is passion. And I believe passion pays in the long run. So go for it. That's all I can say. Thank you very much, guys.